My name is Beth. This is my friend, is Kiki. Hi. Welcome back to Race and Relations Community Conversations. Uh, this is talk number two. We were surprised by the feedback that we got from the first talk. We've kind of decided to just come back and share some more stories. I know I referenced and I kept saying they. Mm -hmm. And when I think of they, and I know there's, you have the corporations that run and own all of this, but I think of the medias, I think of the narratives being pushed out through the media. I think of Hollywood. I think of the movies. Um, so when I say they, I probably need to explain that. I think of all of these things shape our thoughts, shape how we view one another. And I think and they, yeah. I think of everyone who controls them. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, like your Hollywood has presented a script. Yep. And then it's okayed. You know, the right. music. Uh, industry you're presented mm -hmm. a song or an album and okay we like this content we don't like this content and all the negativity is pushed and that's the thing is we're constantly being fed from all these different areas how to feel how to view you it's like the the news will put out every single negative bad thing that this community does and yet you very seldomly hear about the good about things. the good thing so you're taught to feel and think and believe a certain way about a black community and I'm taught to feel a certain way about the white community now we're in this pot and everything is being pushed as far as it's not mixing well. And nothing is mixing well at all it's just this everything that they have pushed is now coming to a head it's like this boiling point and everybody's just arguing and hating on one another like you're saying like you were taught mm -hmm. or you learned a certain behavior towards right. black people and it's like black people also get the same lessons from society that you've gotten. Right. That you're better as a white person, that um, we're less than yes. compared to white people. I, know, I don't know who the they, they actually are, is, but... But there's somebody. There is somebody, no. And they're doing some bad <laughs> stuff. They are. They're making bad decisions on behalf of humanity. Yeah, they are. I mean, they would rather yeah. see us do blood for blood than they would us unite. If you could control the images being portrayed, you can shape what people think about you right. and in turn what you think about yourselves. Because think about the little black kid who's sitting at home watching TV shows and until this movie, Black Panther, you don't really have a lot of images of positive no, you heroes right. of yourself, a right. lot of reflection of yourself. Yeah. And you see Lord of the Rings and you see like, an, and it's like, really? There were no black people during the time where um, Gandalf right. was the wizard. You know what I mean? And if they were, totally they probably agree with under you. Yeah. costumes of orcs. Then you mm -hmm. get movies like 300. And you know, during that time, it was more mixed than it is now, but you get an all-white cast. Right. And you even have, the, but when you get into the African stories, like The Mummy, yeah. and you get yeah. a caricature, yeah. and you get a bad image of pharaohs and sorcery. Mm -hmm. There's almost this fear of getting along. Right. That we seem more comfortable divided. Like, as if people are afraid to be friends. There's a guard up still. You yes. know what I mean? About letting go of, I guess, what if it's a stigma or whatever it is, to become, like, friends. As I just to say, yeah. like, if, if, if something were to happen to divide the country, then us as friends would be like, okay, you are over there with the white side and I'm over here with the black side. Right. What, what would be the thing that would be needed to keep us? Together. together when there was like that rash of um killings it was mm -hmm. just so much television um media coverage of right. cops shooting young black men and my son's thought process was well he had to be doing something they he did not just gonna right. stop them for nothing right and i'm like well it really does happen like that you know what i mean yes like um he's which is sad though because it's 2018 he's starting to see that thing he held the door open for a lady, and she was white, and mm -hmm. she was with her, I guess, um, whoever he was to her, the gentleman. Instead of her going through the door that my son held open for her, she opened the door and held it open for her guy to come through. Mm -hmm. And my son was like, did you see that, Mom? Yeah. I was like, yeah. And he was like, w w was the door I was holding open not good enough? I don't, I don't understand. And I'm like, well, some people are just like that. And they are, but, but the conversation continued in the car, you know, because yeah. he was really bothered was by bothered. it. But this happens to black children. Mm -hmm. You're introduced to that way of thinking right. that it's okay for you to be treated a certain way. 
in yeah. society because it was kind of rudish. So you're entitled to feel angry when people mm -hmm. do that. Maybe it wasn't rude for her. Maybe she didn't notice. You know, you start to say things you do. about you. But he saw it. Right. And I guess he had a, his own personal because he saw her see him hold it all open. <laughs> and he saw her look at him. You and know what I'm saying? He saw it. He, it was his own experience. I'm not teaching him that it's okay. Right. After I taught myself, mm -hmm. you know, you're a child and you're, it's kindergarten. Black History Month is already established. Right. But every year, every Black History Month, you get the same people, same things. Yeah. And it's like after the third or fourth grade, you should be a master of the Black History Month in the school system. Right. You get tight. Well, what happened before slavery is, 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 is a question that you need to answer. Yeah, I agree. And if you let whoever they are tell your story, there was nothing before slavery. Right. You were nothing before we came and helped you from being savages. Right. But then you start to research history and of your people and you find you come from greatness. You have a different air about yourself. Certain right. pride that you weren't given from the place you live, the world you live, right. the environment or the state, mm -hmm. the, whatever it is. Yeah. Wherever you live, you're, it's the air about you that you're taught you're less than. But when you start to learn about the greatness mm -hmm. before slavery, mm -hmm. where you descended from before you, it was literally taken from you, you start to feel a pride and a sense of yourself that you you no longer allow them, whoever they are, to define you. So do you, do you think, I don't know, some of my thought is that I think people feel threatened. For example, like, as a white person, if you bring black people, like, you know how we were talking, if... If you make a better product than a white mm -hmm. person, I'm the better salesman, mm -hmm. okay? What's wrong with you making the better product? As a store owner, would I feel threatened if the black community was better at making the product? Because does it mean I'm going to lose my spot? Do, do you know what I'm saying? Well, I do know what you're saying. And it's like I said, it's the same feeling for the, for the black person yeah. like, um, throughout history. Mm -hmm. If a black person invented something during slavery, the master would take uh, credit for the invention. Right. And up until a certain point in history, a black person couldn't even register to have a patent right. for yeah. something that they have created. There's kind of a stigma. I guess it's a double entendre, I guess. <laughs> you know, black people don't know how to do business. So you go to the white person to get it done right. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, right. But at the same time, it's like if I go, are they going to take credit for the thing that I've created, that's this great thing. Right. Am I going to, or am I going to sell it for money? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To make more money. It's like all these things. And So you wonder, though, if, if some of this thing, like this system that yeah, kind of like looms over like us. Like sheeple. Yeah, basically <laughs> like sheeple. And you got the, the, the oddballs that go the other way. Yeah, so it's kind of like the system that has kind of taken the time to teach you what I should mean to you mm -hmm. and what you should mean to me. And it's kind of like, you know, we can use links and we can Google things and we can do all of these things and never really talk about why maybe you coming up higher, I don't know if I'm saying this right, um, would make the white community feel threatened that they're going to lose their place. Because it's like you're competing for resources, you're competing yeah, basically. for wealth. And if you stop the hold that you have on one race from accumulating wealth, does that mean that you're going to take away from the wealth that I already have? Yeah, that, I mean, and I wonder, too, if that's some of it, because I, I believe that I, as a white person in the white community, was told certain things about you, and you were told certain things about me. Well, and once, once I started <laughs> learning about my history, it, yeah. became, it became a different conversation with myself about white people. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. to separate present from the past. Mm -hmm. You are not your grandparents. You know, you're not your forefathers. Right. You're not the people who came before you. There are certain things that are passed down through generations. Yes. That's that air that's yes. passed mm -hmm. down, whether it's through not speaking about it or blatantly teaching it as a legacy of this is how you're supposed to be. Right. As I kind of look out in present time now, it seems to be that there's more hatred. It's well, yeah, because I can speak for myself. Okay. Where my hatred came from was, like I was saying, like after learning all of these things about myself and my people and where I came mm -hmm. from, it was like, oh, man, like 
I hate this white supremacy thing that seems yes. to be floating around. Right. And I hate it. Till I started to have relationships with different white people, I myself was hating them for reasons of, you know, just things that happened in the past to my people. Not for anything right. <clears throat> that happened now. Well, I think because white represents a system. You know what I mean? From times past, I think oh, when black the people, man. <laughs> the man, <laughs> the man, you know, when black maybe people the look at elitist government, the skin color, mm -hmm. it represents oppression. It represents all of these things, even though I personally haven't contributed to that, knowingly contributed to that. Mm -hmm. Growing up, I think because I was so sheltered from certain things, that things were going on that I didn't even know or understand what that was. I didn't realize it was mistreatment. I just thought, right. well, they're that's doing the something way wrong. That's the way it is because they told me that you were doing this thing wrong and this is how you get treated when you do something wrong. But then if I do that same thing wrong, I'm not getting treated the same way. After the Reconstruction era, after mm -hmm. slavery, there was all the people in control who wanted slavery to continue. Mind you, Lincoln wasn't against slavery. He mm -hmm. was just wanted to punish right. the southern states for not for seceding from the Union. Right. Since then, I, I believe that there's been a goal to hold black people back from mm -hmm. attaining wealth in this country or status in this country. But they never changed those laws and ways. And so if they're still going off of laws and um, sentences that help precedents, right. they're still going off the past. For, and this is just my opinion. <laughs> you know, they just went from um, people in power, like politicians and stuff, mm -hmm. now that power went to corporations. Right. And the corporations are not targeting one group of people. They want to have control over everybody. Over everybody. Mm -hmm. And so now it's every all-inclusive now. Just one group of people are not having their human rights taken away from them. It's right. everyone. Well, yeah, everyone now is affected. And, right. I, I, and the thing that I'm finding is that from growing up, it's that unless it knocks on your door, you don't care. You don't feel it. If someone else is struggling until it comes for you, you have no idea. And this, and this is, this is again, my opinion. I'm like, well, shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Sorry. I'm like, well, dang. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> okay, well, shit. Okay. You know what I mean? um, this has been happening to black people all this time, and now here come the white people because it's, have, it's affecting them Because now. it's affecting them. And right. I'm like, well, shit. I mean, that's not fair. You no, know, it's like not. It's, but, it's, it's, but then the other thing is, But then you have to get past that. Because it, it basically boils down to human rights. We're all human beings. Right. And we all bleed blood. You know what I mean? Right. And we have to share this country. We have to share this planet. We have to preserve the resources. And yeah. we have to make it, you know, a, a place where it's not going to end up like Mars. <laughs> and it's all dried out of natural resources. And you can't tell anything because of greed. Racism started from greed. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's continuing from greed. And it's broadening itself. The, the power rests above us, above all of us. No, the power rests with No, no, wait, wait, hold on. Well, no, it yeah. does, but yeah, I mean the, not, the power, to like the together. power of the elites, there's this power that they have. They don't even have power. Well, we give they, them the power. we've given them a lot of power, and I should say that. We've mm -hmm. given them more power than they deserve because what they're doing with that is they're profiting off of it. They're benefiting off of it. The wealth, they're getting the wealth. Me and you are down here working to give them what they have. And it's um, legal tender. <laughs> and the more... <laughs> oh, the the coupons, more, I mean, um, money. The more that I hate your skin color, the more you hate my skin color, the better off they do. It's true. Do you know, because and because they keep us divided. It's like a circus. All yeah. these reality shows mm -hmm. and stuff to distract you from what's really going on. Yes. And so we have people who are unaware of their power because they got so much materialistic falseness yes. that they're engulfed in that they can't get out of that to get off the chair and just get out and start doing stuff. And I, I mean, agree, like, yeah. it's, we're in a time where to, all, to make a really big difference, people are going to have to start, again, being martyrs and mm -hmm. dying for things that they believe in. Mm -hmm. And I think you, and a lot of this... Ignorance has to die. And that's going to be a tough one. Well, because stupidity. It, well, you could be yeah, ignorant well, of you something be, until you... But right. when you're stupid, you just choose to just be stupid. You choose <laughs> but that's to a not hard know. one because how do you... How does that even mm -hmm. change? Because people believe in their own stupidity. 
and they really no, they really do. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's like they're not the only ones who believe in the same <laughs> it's thing. True. It's like, do you know such as that? And I, you know, I sometimes I wonder if more white people are kind of waking up to certain things that they had been asleep to for so long because it, it, it's been easy. Do, do you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. been comfortable. My life is comfortable. My bubble is comfortable. But now you're coming for that stuff. But I feel like as black people have been too comfortable in their little poverty bubble. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, you get into a comfort zone and they don't... But if you don't know, you can't do better. So you don't know that right. there, are, there are ways and avenues and ways to work together to get out of something. But people mm -hmm. are so divided that I can't work with you long enough to get something off the ground and egos get involved and yes, feelings yeah. and shift away from facts and stuff. Right. But if we could just sit with the fact that we're human and and just sit with the fact that we're different right but different doesn't make one better than the other and that's what I think we have to hold on to I mean if we're gonna bring people or if people are gonna come together they have to be able to have conversations without a million links well they can't already be in saying? their mind thinking closed right your mind cannot be closed but you, there's that person that you talk to that just can't see anything beyond and that you really like, no, no, I can't see, I can't understand that. I can't understand why you think that way because I think this. And, uh, and you can't change that. There's some things like that you can't really change as far as what people think, but if you can get a majority of people to understand that at the end of the day, they will take from a black person the system as much as they will take from a white person. You know what I mean? They will... But they'll give you more from the system. <laughs> yeah. Then they'll give. And then they'll take it back. Oppression happens, you know, you have your, your white poverty. Growing up, like, I didn't, we weren't rich. We didn't have a lot of money. So you were always, they were better than you. Do you know what I'm saying? You had to look a certain way and act a certain way. And when I, we moved into a but certain... But that's true for black people, too. It's right. like, in, in order for, you know, like, in order for you to get ahead in the corporate world, okay, you can't be aggressive. You can't talk with your hands. You can't be passionate about what you're speaking about. Right. You know, you can't, you know, because that's called being hood or ghetto or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you got to perm your hair. You can't wear mm -hmm. your hair in the afro, big fro. You got to conform to a certain way to what in order to get to ahead. Yeah. And then you have all these women not perming their hair. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? They're starting to be more cultural about themselves. Right. Or whatever cultural means to them. Right. Expressing it in their way. And then they I get mean, I don't see anything upon, wrong with that, though. You know, because you're not conforming. You don't look the part, so right. you won't get the part. We're, we're in this charged environment where if you say something that goes against a certain narrative, I mean, you get nailed. Well, yeah. And it's even if you look a certain way or you express something a certain way, and I think people have to drop a lot of this anger, these little microaggressions where they get so upset with so everything that they, nobody's talking anymore. There'll be a link about some, a racially charged subject, mm -hmm. and you'll read the comments, could be considered, oh, that's a racist thought. Right. Coming from a white person or a black person. Right. But I agree with a lot of those statements that right. they're saying. And I don't think it's racist. I just think it's an opinion about yes. racism right. that is happening in this country. And everybody is so sensitive. You know, you have all these words that we have to create to accommodate people. And that's, that can, yeah, and that's, and that's not that's always annoying. a good thing. It's not, that's not always, always a good, good thing. thing. Because, like you were saying, with the comments, I read a lot of the comment sections. And there's I mean, a you lot can get... Of you can get into arguments. <laughs> big arguments. Over comments. Yeah, yeah. over and just get simple labeled. comments. I'm and a just cis from. Woman. I don't know what that is. What is it? A cis woman. I have to Google that. <laughs> no. But I mean, the comments, there's some comments that I don't think are racist. Mm -hmm. I think it's someone's opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think if we explore what they're saying, we can be brought to understand. Just ask the basic question. Why they feel the way they do. And what, when, where, and why. And that's it. And then, and then you sometimes you come to find or understand that you know mm -hmm. what these are things that they were taught, or itself. maybe it's things they experienced, or things they went through. Yeah, yeah not everyone has the same experience. No, and that should be okay. Oppression is oppression, but for a black community, it's harsher than it is for the white community. But it doesn't mean it's not there. I've always said this thing: if, if once black people in America get their due diligence mm -hmm. and their basic human rights status or whatever it is in this country, then that will be applied to everyone. Right. Because they use the techniques and the tactics that they used on us, now they're using it on everyone. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I worked on them. They don't want to turn the blind eye to it. So the people who thought it was okay and that's are going to continue to think it's okay. That's the sad thing. I mean, no one even knew. And then they, knew. Scare you, they scare us into electing away our rights anyway. Yeah, they do. So now it's, no one's going to have human rights. And we're going to get to the point where if we can't figure this thing out, we're going to give them so much control and so much power. But it's like it's, it's that already it's done to it's a point where it's like we're holding on to a corner left of whatever constitution rights it has for white people or black people. Whatever right. it was doing, we're losing it. We are because we're, we're fighting over everything. Oh, the dumbest thing. Over and everything. And, and a lot of these arguments, it's just wasted energy. Being human and coexisting on this planet. Like a lot of... A lot of the conversations we have, I let you into what I feel could be racist thoughts of yeah. my own. You know what right. I mean? But you're a white person and we have these conversations and you don't judge me no. as being like um, a black racist. I want to know you. I want to know why you feel that way. And at the end of the day, if I'm just like, oh my God, you're a racist, ha ha ha, see black people can be racist. All I'm doing is trying to prove something. I don't. I want to know why you feel what you feel. And at the end of it, a lot of times I understand why you feel what you mm -hmm. feel. Because we're able to talk about it. So if you stick to the facts, and the basic fact is that we're human. Right. And that's it. I mean, I think we have to be humans first and people second. I think when you become people. I think a person is a legal fiction created by the federal government yeah. to have jurisdiction over <laughs> us. So we're well, all yeah, in basically. essence just human beings. We're just humans. So let's just, if we have the most rights as humans. Yes. We have no rights as anything else. People, person. Right. It, black, it, it. <laughs> white. white. There's a way for us to get along. There's a way for us to work past all of this stuff and get to this place where I just see you. I don't see your color. I don't see, I just see you. Have you have to see my color. Back. Well, no, I mean, I see your <laughs> color, but that's not but it doesn't, it has the to predominant be a, right. thing. Because when I see people's color, right, I'm like, wow, their complexion is so pretty. Yeah. It's the it's probably the first thing well, no, I, I notice I, about someone. And I don't like when I don't people define say, that person when people because say, of their color. Oh, I don't see color. First off, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. Because you to do get see past color. color. It's but not to say you don't past, see it. Right, exactly. Like I don't want to just look at you and that's all I and see. And I do see people and say, Oh my god, I wonder where they're from. Well I do too, because I think it's interesting to learn with? about other and cultures. And then if they speak with an accent, I'm like, Well, where are you from? Yeah. How's it like? Do you miss your country? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And I try not to be invasive, but I'm very curious. Yes. Like when you come from a different country, what do you think about America and this melting pot and, you know, the lack of morals and yeah, anything know. goes? It's it's such a cultural shock to certain people. It is. It really is. But I think it's so that's different. the beginning of getting to humanity is, oh, you're from Iraq. How is it over there? Right. And they're going through things now. Right. That. I know I don't I'm not. Even want to, I don't want to go there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, that's another day. <laughs> because we all behave and act on what we believe about ourselves. We do. Yeah. So you have to be able to listen to what someone is telling you about how they became themselves. And that's And it important. might give you some insight on how to actually have communicate a, yeah, or have a talk. relationship with right. them beyond that point. Right. And that's what I think. What works for me and you. And that's what we do. Right. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll down, be able to get to the nitty gritty. I mean, there's things that I tell you mm -hmm. <laughs> that I wouldn't, I'd be afraid to say. And those things that you tell me are less harmful than the things that I think. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the things that I think. It's just, this is all new for me. Engaging in relationships with white people mm -hmm. is very new for me. Right. It's like a very big maturity accomplishment, mm -hmm. you know, personal accomplishment for myself. Right. But it's a it growth, really too, and I it think is. it's a good thing. I think it's like... And, and that fear you said. Yeah. I have that fear. I think like everybody of should, does. <laughs> like, how close can I really be with the white person? Like, how mm -hmm. much of a friend are they going to be towards me? Like, what is that? Like, what, what have you done to me to make me feel like you would just... No, see, I'm, I'm intrigued by you and by the things that you say, and I want to know and I want to understand... Why you fear me? And then I refer you to certain things. Yeah, like, you oh, do. I didn't ever knew that. And I look at these and things. And then you get angry. <laughs> I do. There's times when I do. I get mad. But, right. but I think you, you have to go through these emotions because they're breakthroughs too. I know there's black people that fear, like you said, relationships with white people. 
because of ancestral things, because of the hierarchy that's predominantly white in this country, and I understand that because and I represent all something. The books that I've read in the readings and the books, but when you when you push all of that out and deal with right now and just deal and with the now and me and you and take all that away and it's just you and I. Yeah, you talk about things that I would want. I want to talk about this stuff with everybody. Yeah, and nobody wants to have these conversations. It's like we're afraid to get to know. I'm afraid to get to know you know what, that I can actually get along with you, that I don't hate you, and that me and you at the end of the day are after the same thing. I guess we got to wrap it up. In conclusion. But no, the, the thing is, is I think what we need to do is not allow, and I'm just going to use the they, but the media, the movies, newspapers, Facebook links, clicks, not, not allow that stuff to define how I feel about you and how you feel about me. Instead of actually doing things to create peace, gen genuine conversations like me and you have, without labeling, without hating, without getting angry, to understand your well, you history and mine. you have to have those and conversations without labels. Right, and I don't know why we can't do that today. I don't know what's so hard about me talking to you. I think it starts with these genuine conversations. I really do. I do too. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in, for listening. I know the conversation was a little, it was kind of all over the place, but these are unscripted, they're, they're raw, they're just real conversations, and I, want, I appreciate everybody's time. Thank you. Thank you, Kiki. You're welcome. Thank you, too. You're welcome. <laughs> Peace out. Yeah.